Now I've just got to put it all back in again. Okay, travel tip number one for this video today. Don't try and go rock hopping when you're wearing thongs. Thongs are what Australians call flip-flops. Having originally come from England, I should probably call them flip-flops, not thongs, but anyone watching in America, I don't mean thongs like. So day four in the Philippines vlog, and what I wanted to do today was to, well, we're having a bit of a resort day today because there's supposed to be a typhoon coming, but if you look behind, and I was looking at the weather before, I don't know exactly, I mean, there's a bit of a storm potentially coming, but it doesn't look like there's actually a typhoon that's going to hit us. But we're staying in the resort today anyway. So what I thought I'd do is, instead of just doing a vlog of me kind of sitting on the beach, I thought what I'd do is share with you my travel tips, but also, more importantly, I'd share with you what's in my travel bag. So what I actually bring with me when I'm traveling and making these kind of videos. <laughs> what was that? Now, an important point to note is this isn't, this, like I'm not a professional videographer. I do YouTube videos um, for fun, basically. I have a background in technology and I love the gear and equipment, but I think that's what makes this video probably more relevant, hopefully to yourself. But for people like me, who are just kind of traveling for fun, but you wanna make your travel videos whilst you're doing that as well, and maybe share those videos as well on YouTube, just like I'm doing here. So what gear do you need? What do I carry? And look, what are the most important things to me? Well, it all comes down to portability and efficiency. That's really what it is. I mean, I want one backpack that's got all my gear in it, that's less than the seven kilo limit that you actually have on most airlines for carry on these days. What can I put in my backpack that's important for me to have here that I can make videos with, but isn't just cumbersome and horrible and annoying to carry around with me whenever I'm traveling. Let's go and have a look. This is what I take when I'm traveling with me then. This is, I think it's a Manfrotto branded backpack. Doesn't matter about the brand of course, but the best thing that I like about this is inside it's got a bunch of different compartments. So it keeps things separated from each other, which means it's really easy to get hold of something quickly if I just want to grab say one lens or one microphone or a memory card or a filter. But it also means it keeps everything separated. So when it's moving around, probably it shouldn't do that too hard, but when it's moving around, things don't bump into each other inside the backpack. So let me divide this into a few different areas. Let's start with cameras. The main camera I use is a Canon 80D. That's the one I'm filming on now. It's really hard to see what I'm talking about because I'm obviously using the, the setup now to film this. So instead, let me shoot it on my iPhone so you can see what I'm talking about. So my main camera is basically divided into three things. This is the Rhoda Video Micro Pro that sits on top. Best thing I like about this microphone is it doesn't require any power. So it's never gonna run out of batteries and it just plugs into the microphone port as you can see on the side here. Canon EOS 80D camera with the 10 to 18 mil lens and I'll go through lenses in a second. And this is my mini tripod that just screws into the bottom, sits down here. It's really easy to pick up and hold. And then it's really easy as well just to pop down on a flat surface as you can see here as I'm using this ironing board as my temporary tripod. So as well as the 10 to 18 mil lens I have on here, there are two other lenses that I always travel with. This is the Canon EFS 24 mil prime lens. This just means it's a fixed focal length, but it gives me an aperture of 1.8, which means it's really wide open, means I can get really good low light shots, but also good depth of field. So that really nice kind of bokeh effect in the background, if I wanna have that really shallow depth of field and that nice blurry background. Other great thing about this lens in particular is it's really thin. It's got a really thin profile, so it doesn't take up much room in the bag at all. Really good for traveling. Second lens is my telephoto lens. This is my Canon 70 to 300 millimeter telephoto. This is my zoom lens. This is the one I use for a lot of the B-roll shots that I put together for some of my sequences. Really good for travel photography and really good for aviation in particular because you can get up quite close to aircraft even if you're the other side of the airfield. And even though it's quite a big lens and it does take up a bit of room in the backpack, it's probably, well it is by far actually the heaviest lens that I carry with me. 
I really use this one a lot when I'm traveling. I really love this lens as well. So for me, it's worth the extra weight because of the different shot variety I can get when I'm using this lens. Then what else is at the front of the bag? Well, noise canceling headphones. I don't really travel anywhere without these. These are the Bose QC35s that I'm currently using at the moment. Very similar to the A20s that I use for flying, except obviously it doesn't have the microphone. Really good as well when I'm working. I use these all the time for editing and they come in this really good pack. They're really small, USB charged, so there's no separate power. So so I always bring these with me, my QC35s. Love these headphones. This bag here, now you may be wondering what this bag actually is. It's one of those reusable shopping bags, but actually what I have inside here is my drone. This is the Mavic Pro Zoom, which I'm currently using at the moment. Now you can get cases for these things, which protect them, full padded cases. Um, first of all, they cost a bit of money, and secondly, they take up a lot more room. So I tried a couple of different alternatives, but to be honest, I found if you take one of these tote bags, put your drone in, wrap it up, you can put an elastic band around the outside, and if that fits snugly inside your camera case, it's protected by the padding either side anyway. As long as it's not moving around too much, it actually protects the drone really well from what I found, and it only takes up that much space in your camera bag. Now, one other camera that I did forget to mention, so obviously I use the ADD, the iPhone as well, the other camera that I always travel with, a GoPro Hero 5 in this case. Now, it's good probably for two reasons. First of all, it's very small. So if you do wanna do vlogging on this, even though the microphone's not great, you can still do vlogging style, normal thing, talking to the camera. It, it does work, and I've seen vlogs that people have done on GoPros, and they're totally fine. The other reason why I really love GoPro is this thing, especially the Hero 5s onwards, I think, they're fully waterproof. Like the sequence you saw at the beginning of this vlog, you would have seen all the stuff that we were doing in, in the water down there that was all filmed on this one GoPro so I really like these cameras small profile waterproof I use them for flying as you know as well but I always travel with one with me as well I think you can get them for a couple of hundred dollars nowadays so if you don't want to pay for the brand new Hero 7 to be honest I really don't think you need it this does 4k 120 frames per second it's a very good camera and you can get them pretty cheap nowadays then the other bits in my travel bag well I always carry spare batteries it's really important if you're carrying these on the plane some of them come with these little protectors which actually cover up the little connectors there so you don't get any shorts travel adapter of course which oh, I'll show you one tip that I have with travel adapters hang on Instead of taking one travel adapter for every bit of equipment that you use, so like one for your iPhone, your laptop, take a power board that you have from home, plug that into your adapter, and then that goes into the socket in whichever country you're traveling in, and then you've got four. When you're trying to cut down on the amount of things that you're carrying, I just think it's one, you know, you only have to carry. This is in a variable ND filter, which I put onto this camera sometimes when it's really bright outside. And the same thing then for the drone, so I have a pack of ND filters that I use on the Mavic Zoom. And then in the back of this backpack, there's a back pocket, and that contains my laptop. Now obviously you can use whatever laptop you want. I'm a Mac boy, so I've just got my Mac PowerBook. This is a really useful bit of kit. It's a USB hub that converts the USB-C to this hub, so you've got multiple ports coming out of here. So if you've got the old USB, which I've got several of those, plus HDMI, plus it's got two slots for memory cards. So that's the standard SD card and the micro SD card. Both of those can go in here as well. And what I've done is I've basically Stuck some Velcro on the bottom, stuck some Velcro onto the laptop, and so whenever I'm traveling, I can just stick this on here, and I never lose it, and it's permanently stuck to the laptop. And finally, backups. I know it's not a very exciting part of the whole process, but you're gonna need to think about it. I use the Lacey Rugged external hard disk. This is a two terabyte, I think two terabyte. Really good for travel, very rugged, doesn't take up much space, and two terabytes for like 10 days worth of vlogging that I'll be doing on this trip. This should be more than enough storage space to back everything up onto here before I get home and back this up onto the master disc. Anyway, the backups, make sure you've got a copy of all your footage and don't just keep it on the camera or on your laptop. All right, enough chit chat. Um, let's go see what's happening with this typhoon. Oh, where's our typhoon? The beach right now is currently closed. I don't think it's to do with the typhoon itself. Actually today, there was a, an earthquake about 100 kilometers off the coast 
and there have been tsunami warnings along the beach fronts here so I think they've closed the beaches just as a precaution. Thankfully everything's been okay and we haven't had any large waves that have come up into the resort and also I was looking at windy.com earlier today and according to that it seems like that low pressure system that was potentially going to turn into the typhoon has actually gone north of where we are today and it's lost a lot of strength as it made it towards the Philippines so thankfully no tsunami down here at the beach, no typhoon. A beautiful sunset just behind us and tomorrow the weather's actually looking quite good again. <laughs>